Thanksgiving is tomorrow. Very epic. And because of that, we're going to go over five ways liberals try to ruin Thanksgiving every year and how to deal with them because chances are that you're going to have to. If you want to preserve turkey, if you want to preserve pumpkin pie, football, implicitly celebrating the conquering of the Indians, all that good stuff. So please do stay tuned. John Doyle in. Heck off, commie. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off Commie. Thanksgiving, of course, is tomorrow. Very excited for that. Also, we're going to start sending out the Heck Off Commie Christmas sweaters pretty soon so that we can try to get them to you before Christmas. So if you want a chance to get one, be sure to go to heckoffcommie.com and sign up for a membership. You can support the channel for less than the price of like four cans of cranberry sauce. And so that's actually, that's what I'm going to do tomorrow. You know, we're going around the table, everyone's saying what they're thankful for. And I'm just going to read a list of everyone supporting the channel. Very thankful for Tyler, for Ron, Joshua, Roger, Ian, Evan, John the Second. These are the men who help make this possible because YouTube demonetizes literally everything that we post within seconds of it posting. Plus, we're doing some very high IQ technical upgrades to the studio right now. So the live shows are going to probably start next month on the website. That's going to be pretty epic. And since it's not on YouTube, I don't have to censor anything that I say. And if you've seen my Instagram live streams, you know what I'm talking about. But anyways, on to the list. Uh, the five ways that liberals try to ruin Thanksgiving in no particular order of prevalence or unpleasantness. Starting off with number one, they claim that Thanksgiving is a celebration of genocide every year, like clockwork. We're told by white liberals that Thanksgiving is a holiday that celebrates the genocide of the Native Americans. Therefore, we're awful people. We also hear this a lot from non-Americans who are so butthurt about not being American that they'll take any opportunity that they can just to take shots at America. Like, here's an article I found a couple years ago from this woman named Belaine Fernandez. And she's American, but her ancestry is Spanish. So it's kind of like... You know, you want to write about how America is this oppressive, evil nation, but who do you think sold us our slaves? Which country was it that pioneered that pesky transatlantic slave trade? Wasn't that Spain and Portugal? But it's just America that has to apologize for doing bad stuff? Okay, just checking. Uh, but it's interesting because in all of these articles that seek to discredit our celebration of Thanksgiving, they don't actually make an intellectually honest case. Invariably, what happens is they start off with a headline that connects Thanksgiving to the genocide of the Indians. And then the text of the article basically timelines how Indians were treated in America, how the historical record of Thanksgiving isn't completely accurate because of a few minuscule differences like what they actually ate or both. And how the Indians were treated in America has nothing to do with why we celebrate and why we continue to celebrate Thanksgiving. I mean... We all know the story, or most of us know the story, some of us might not because our education system is pretty hecked, but basically what happened is the people to whom we refer as the pilgrims pulled up at Plymouth Rock, they were supposed to be at what's now Manhattan, but it happens, and so they get to Plymouth Rock, and they find this deserted Indian village with a bunch of stored food, water, and also um, a lot of cleared land, and so the pilgrims were like, oh, cool, uh, who do we pay for this? But everyone who lived in the village was like straight up dead, so that was a bummer, but then a few months later, this dude who used to live in that village named Squanto pulled up and Squanto's like, yo, what's up, my guys? I used to live here until I was kidnapped and sold into slavery in, you guessed it, Spain. And also, I speak English and accept Christ. Want me to help you plant crops and negotiate a treaty with the most important Indian chief in the region? And the pilgrims were like, okay, Squanto's confirmed epic. Yes, thank you, Squanto. Very cool. And so what's referred to as the first Thanksgiving was actually a three-day harvest period in October. And there were about 90 Indians and only about 50 pilgrims because so many of them had died during the winter. And the pilgrims were like, hey, do you guys want some vegetables and fish? And the Indians were like, uh, yeah, you guys want some deer? And so that's, that, <laughs> that's basically what happened. Don't listen to your history teachers. Listen to me. That is what happened. Uh, but the reason we celebrate Thanksgiving, again, has nothing to do with what happened to the Indians. To say that we celebrate Thanksgiving because of the genocide of the Native Americans, that would be like saying that we celebrate Veterans Day because of all the people killed by our military. It's exactly the same, because while I'm not going to apologize for either of those actions, that's not fundamentally why we celebrate them. I won't apologize for America conquering the Native Americans. We can have that discussion, but you have to understand that that is a separate discussion from the Thanksgiving discussion. The reason that we celebrate Thanksgiving is because we are giving thanks to our family members. We are giving thanks to our friends, those who have helped us in our lives. And most importantly, we're giving thanks to God. And the reason that we celebrate Veterans Day is to honor those who have served our country. That doesn't require that we believe every action ever taken by the involved parties is good. Just like celebrating Thanksgiving doesn't require that we believe every action taken by the involved parties is good. It's a valid discussion, but it's a completely separate discussion. 
We can have the Nagasaki discussion. We can have the Hiroshima discussion. I won't apologize for any of it, but we can have that discussion. The only thing is that it has to be intellectually honest. It has to be a separate discussion. Also, important to note that the reason that the left takes issue with traditions such as Thanksgiving is because Thanksgiving is fundamental to the social fabric of America. And they seek to disintegrate and destabilize that social fabric because they resent it. And they do this in many ways, but attacking holidays is one of the more incessant ones just because it happens every year. But number two, liberals are evangelically progressive. They just can't let Thanksgiving be Thanksgiving. They literally see it as an opportunity to not only educate you on the things we just talked about regarding Indians, but also on everything else that they believe. And if you disagree, it's not only that you're wrong, but you're also morally reprehensible. That's why they do stuff like this. I saw this earlier. This feminist writer is planning to totally own everyone at Thanksgiving by wearing clothes that say the word vagina. Yeah, uh, get owned, grandma. My shirt says vagina on it, grandma. You're getting totally owned right now, grandma. It's like, it's so annoying. Because to these people, educating their family members just means reciting whatever they read on Vox, Vice, The Huffington Post, whatever they've heard from John Oliver. Like, almost every time I speak to one of these people, I could literally type in what they've told me into Google and find out where they heard this from verbatim. It's intellectual plagiarism. I don't understand it. And even worse, they're so convinced that they're not only correct, but superior to you, that they have no clue what you actually believe. And this is reaffirmed by research done by Jonathan Hyde. Basically, conservatives understand liberal beliefs better than liberals understand conservative beliefs. And those who self-identify as extremely liberal are even less likely to understand conservative beliefs. And I don't know if you've had this experience, but when you're talking to them and, you know, you're listening to them make their point, you're kind of visualizing this tree with different paths that you think that they might take. And so you can kind of plan your response from there. But it's like with them, you make your point and they just get mad. Like they just revert to these emotionally based arguments. They call you names, whatever they have to do to convince others that they have not lost the argument. But more importantly, to convince themselves that they definitely have not lost the argument because they truly believe that it's their job to convince everyone of their beliefs. That's why I say that they are evangelically progressive. They are not looking to have a discussion. They are looking to have a lesson. And if you disagree with them, they're going to try to discredit you to make sure that you don't interfere with their efforts to teach other people the correct beliefs. It's the same thing when your uncle pulls up in his new BMW, your niece wears a hoodie advertising an elite school that she got into. It's all petty, unnecessary, and unwarranted competition. Just like when your cousin sits down at the table wearing a shirt that says, decolonize your bookshelf. What she's really trying to say is, I'm more woke than you. I have the correct opinions. Look at me. Give me validation. Give me attention. I think white people are bad. Isn't that unique? Look at me. I'm so unique and totally not an NPC. Number three, they give your racist grandpa a hard time. Now look, I'm not saying that the old guy's right for having outdated opinions. I'm not saying that any form of bigotry is okay. I'm just saying, give the guy a break, you know? Like, he was probably born in the Great Depression. He's probably killed like two dozen communists or Nazis. He raised your parents. He gave you like 25% of his genetics. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, he's been through a lot. You give a break. You know, he's getting older. You really want your last few Thanksgivings together centered around putting your grandpa through diversity training, you know? I just, I don't think that anyone gets to be 85 years old just to have their mind changed by some college kid unironically wearing a Che t-shirt when they're like, Grandpa, you can't call them Negroes anymore. You know, it's like, he's your grandpa. You should love him. Very least, you should respect him. Just shut your mouth, eat your turkey, and remember, bigotry is largely generational. It's disappearing in this country, so just be thankful that you got to learn from such a young age that diversity is a strength because evidently, your grandpa wasn't as lucky as you. Number four, they compromise the integrity of tradition. Thanksgiving is Thanksgiving because it is Thanksgiving. You know, if it weren't Thanksgiving as defined by what is done on Thanksgiving, then it would be something else. So the only way to have true Thanksgiving is to preserve what is done on Thanksgiving. Otherwise, you're just doing something else. And as conservatives, ultimately, we're trying to conserve tradition, which includes the Thanksgiving tradition. That means we're eating turkey, stuffing, mashed potatoes, gravy, green beans, cranberry sauce, pumpkin pie. You know, are you seeing the picture I'm painting? Liberals come to Thanksgiving and they're like, Oh, I brought this pitcher of water and it's got strawberries floating around in it. Oh, I brought this burger bowl, but it's made with a vegan meat substitute. It's like, bruh, stop it. Like, you took marriage. You took history. You took art. You've taken everything. You took gender. Just let me have my turkey. Like, I went to a Thanksgiving last year. There was a taco bar. I was like, oh, well, where's the Thanksgiving food? And the host was like, oh, well, we thought it would be fun to have a taco bar. And I'm like, oh, really? Because that's decidedly not fun. And I actually hate you. That didn't happen. I ate my tacos. I was dejectedly eating my tacos, but I unironically believe this. It's not a coincidence that they do this. And I don't necessarily think that they're doing it with bad intentions, but what they believe fundamentally is that tradition is bad and progress as defined by anything that isn't tradition is good. And we see this exercise throughout their lives, whether it be in their politics or in their Thanksgiving food. 
The same way when they're like, oh, well, I thought it'd be fun if instead of watching football, we put on Veep. Or what about The Office? Did you know that I like The Office, as indicated by my quirky Dunder Mifflin crew neck? Number five. This is sort of related uh, to the second one, but I needed a nice number five, so this is going to get its own. And that's that politics takes precedence over family. Politics takes precedence over friendship. Uh, and both of these are fundamental to the Thanksgiving celebration. But the left cannot separate politics from morality because all of their ideas have proven to be such catastrophic failures that literally the only argument that they have left is a moral argument because it's much easier to twist the morality of an idea than it is to twist the evidence from putting the idea into practice. That's why the leftist political strategists and media figures frame every argument as a moral argument. It's not gun rights. It's you don't care about dead kids. It's not tax policy. It's, oh, you don't care about poor people. You see the pattern? This is why so many of us have lost friends or even family members over political differences. And research from the nonpartisan public, uh, public Religion Research Institute excuse me, showed that over a quarter of liberals, 28% of them, had unfriended or blocked one of their friends on social media because of political disagreements. And this was more than three times the number of conservatives that had done the same. Also noteworthy is only 9% of independents had reported doing so. So clearly, there's something happening on the left that isn't translating to other parts of the political spectrum. And what that is, is that all of the left's arguments arguments have been reduced to arguments of morality by necessity. And in the eyes of the left, that means that if you disagree with them, logically speaking, you are then immoral. So they have no problem with cutting you off because why would you want to associate with someone who's immoral, you know? So this is certainly a big problem for America, certainly a big problem for both the right and the left, but it'll be fine. <laughs> Probably not, but we'll figure it out. But happy Thanksgiving. I'm grateful for all of you, and I hope that you have a great holiday. Hey guys, if you like this video, let me know in the comments what you're thankful for. I'm curious to know. I've been known to monologue about how thankful I am for sinks, which is true. I've been known to stare at water flowing out of sinks for minutes on end, just like basking in how much of a miracle this invention is. It's not very ecological, but you get the point. Also, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I hope you have a great Thanksgiving. Thank you so much for watching, and may God bless America.